Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Black Sheep Knitter podcast. My name is Sarah, and I am coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin. If this is your first time here, um, there's a lot coming. <laughs> if you're a return viewer, then you already know that I'm long-winded and I can't stop starting stuff. So um, you're just going to get more of that in this episode. Um, today, I have my regular knitting, as per usual. I have some acquisitions. Um tools and fiber. Um, I also have some crochet. <laughs> so I'm always talking about all these other fiber arts that I do, but I've so far only talked about knitting, but today that is going to change. So we are going to talk a little bit about some crocheting that I'm doing. Um, and yeah, so, oh, I forgot about the, is it an elephant in the room? It's an elephant in my room, but perhaps not in your room, <laughs> which is, um, thank you all so much. I think I mentioned on my last podcast that I wanted to do a giveaway when I hit like a hundred subscribers and then a thousand subscribers. And then I was like, I don't know what milestone I should be using. So then I just arbitrarily was like, okay, like 5,000 subscribers. Um, as of this morning, I had like 5,500 new subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I have not actually figured out how to do a giveaway but you know what i'm not letting that stop me at the end of this video i'm going to announce a giveaway and then i will frantically email people and be like what do i do um but it, it definitely is happening like for real for real it's happening i'm excited i hope you're excited i handpicked both of the skeins um yeah, so I'm super excited about that. Um, the other thing is, actually, you know what? I'm gonna save that. You won't even, you're like, what? I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save it. Let's talk about what I'm wearing, shall we? So we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about this because we talked about this last episode and I just wanted to uh, wear it today because some people didn't think about it as a potential head, like a head wrap situation, which I didn't really either until I really started looking at it. So I thought, I'll just, I'll just pop it on. I'll, I'll just pop it on. It's the Sophie, it's the Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. Um, but that's not, that's not why you're here. She is finished, folks. Done. Kaput. Finito. This is The Snowy Forest by Midori Hirose. If you watched my previous two episodes, you will be aware that this has been a quest, a journey, an odyssey, <laughs> just full of shenanigans, partially my fault, partially that I don't have a torso and deep yolks are just not my friends. And I have a couple of sweaters in my queue where I'm like side eyeing them because they're deep yolks and I'm like, Sarah, let's stop this. <laughs> stop stop doing this so they're probably not going to get made even though they're very pretty because i don't want to i don't want to go through this again i am very happy with this and i'm going to stand up in a second so that you can see it but i do not i don't want them i don't want them problems i don't want them problems i'm just going to knit things that fit my body shape you know um and i i will just say this i will have another this is a tangent i will have a little bit of a rant <laughs> later um but I do think that sometimes it's good to know what looks good on you, like what fits your proportions and your body. And I don't mean like you're not allowed to wear certain styles. Like, I don't believe in that. Like if you want to be out with whatever hanging out or not hanging out, full cover, whatever, like do you. Um, but I think what I mean is like sometimes we can take a pattern and the measurements are correct but it's just the wrong shape. And sure, you can massage it and you can make a bunch of changes and you can kind of get it to where you want it to be. But at that point, you've almost made your own pattern. So I think what I learned from this particular project, as much as I love it, and uh, I'm gonna be wearing it a lot. But what I've learned is that this is probably not a shape that I will ever make again. Just too much work, too much work. I don't have enough torso for this. Um, splitting the sleeves was quite a hassle. 
trying to figure out how to like shuffle the stitches to get them to split in a way that made sense for the sleeves was a hassle. Um, it just, the whole thing was just too much work. It was too much work. And like, I have a friend from my knit night. Hey, Margaret. <laughs> um, and she knit this for someone with a normal length torso and knit it in like no time and had no troubles and that person's wearing it and it's great. And that's exactly my point, right? So like we both made the same sweater. I didn't get gauge, but I like accounted for that by like changing the size that I made. So I got fake gauge, right? We've all kind of played that shuffle. Um, it just didn't work and she had no problems. And so I remember being like, oh, like when you get to the to the end of the yoke, like let me know how it goes. And she was like, mm. um, so yeah. So I just, no more deep yokes, no more deep yokes. Um, keep me accountable because I say a lot of stuff. <laughs> And then, and then a pattern comes out and I'm like, that's so pretty. And then I make it anyway. And then I'm, I'm going to be back on here in like a year being like, people, why didn't you remind me not to make this sweater? Look at all this work I just did. Anyway, so this is knit with, um, I forget the yarn. God, it's been so many years since I've been working on this sweater. Um, it's my favorite and I still can't think of the name of it. So apologies, it's in the last video. Y'all know, it's my favorite tweed. Um, I probably will be buying more of it even though I have a sweater's quantity in two other colors. Anyway, let me stand up because I'm sure you're wondering like, but like, what does it look like? There it is. There's my natural waist. So it sits right where I want it. Let me, sorry, I had to put a shirt underneath because it is a thousand degrees in here and there's no way, there's no way I can keep the sweater on the whole time because I'm already sweating. Um, but yeah, it is unblocked. The reason it's unblocked is because I decided, so somebody messaged me, thank you so much kind soul, and said, hey, I also knit a sweater out of that yarn that I still can't remember the name of, so go me. Um, but it grew a lot when I blocked it and I was like, oh no. Because you know what I didn't do? I did swatch, patting myself on the back. I have been swatching for these sweaters. I didn't wash the swatch, which is like kind of the next step, but like that was like too much work because I just wanted to get started. So I didn't actually wash it. So yeah, finding out that it stretched, I was like, oh, but I'm already at my natural waist, so I better stop knitting. So it looks a little a tad short. I will give you that. Um, I put it on with a pair of jeans and I definitely had like a little bit of a tummy roll like popping out the, <laughs> at the bottom. But I feel pretty confident that once I use my Pringle, which is the Coco Knits pop-up dryer, um, Andrea Mowry calls it the Pringle, and I think that is so endearing and adorable. And so like, I refuse to call it the real name. I only can call it the Pringle. I think I even might've commented on their Instagram. Oh my God, you're selling the Pringle. And they're just like, <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to wait for my Pringle to show up and it took a long time. I think it didn't get here until like two days ago. And I was like, I could try to block this before I film, but it's a sweater and I don't, I don't want to risk trying to wear a wet sweater <laughs> for this video or having to film during my work week. So it's unblocked. But as you could see, the sleeves are hitting exactly where I wanted them to, minus like maybe like an inch, half inch to an inch. Um, and then the body is exactly where I want it to be. So I kind of feel like I will block it. It'll maybe grow like an inch. I can live with that. It'll cover my tummy roll. It'll come a little bit further down my arms. But like other than that, I think that's pretty good. So I am very happy with this. Um, Plymouth Homestead Tweed. Do you see how the brain works? I'm getting ready to take it off because I'm dying. I'm so hot. And my brain was like, wait, 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 wait. I know the name. I know the name. <laughs> so yes, it's Plymouth Homestead Tweed in the colorway charcoal. Um, it's heavenly yarn. It You probably can't even tell, but it has been ripped out and re-knit three times, three and a half times. Can you do a half rip? I don't know. A lot. And it started looking kind of, it looked kind of sad by the time I got to the final rip out where I was just like, it's got to work this time because otherwise I'm not sure this yarn's going to look like yarn. <laughs> and I think it looks beautiful. 
And I think it actually, this yarn can do no wrong unless when I block it, it stretches like 10 inches, in which case I will come back and I will say not to, just kidding, I won't tell you not to use it. Just do better than me and wash your swatch. I feel like every episode I have like one of these like things that I didn't do that I'm trying to warn people about, that would be one of them. I used to knit sweaters, sorry, this is another tangent, but like, I used to knit sweaters all the time before I took my little like decade hiatus from knitting. And I never swatched. I never swatched and like 95% of the things I made came out perfectly. Like for real, even like fitted things. Like I made a couple of tees when I was a little bit flatter in the tummy area. Um, and like they like fit perfectly. And I'm just like, I am actually doing my due diligence now in my in my wise old years. And I'm swatching and like the swatch is a lie. They're liars, those swatches. And maybe yes, if I washed and dried it, perhaps it would not be a liar. But I didn't do that. So I'm going to call it a liar and blame it and not me for not like following through the whole process. Anyway, so Snowy, for Snowy Forest by Midori Hirose. Love it, love it, love it. I will never make this deep yoke again. Unless I forget. But remember, please keep me accountable. Don't, don't let me do this to myself again. Okay, great. All right, so that is... Finished object number one, and also incidentally what I'm wearing, but I'm taking it off because I'm really hot. Okay. Oh, so much better. <laughs> it's really warm. And you know what's really funny? So here's here's the best thing about this, because y'all are probably just like, didn't you post something on Instagram about it being like negative 12? I sure did. I sure did. So back in November, I was just like bitching and moaning and whining, like, why is it warm? It's Wisconsin, blah, 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 blah. and then I like skedaddled off to Boston where it was also warm, and then I skedaddled off to Montreal where it was snowy, but also not super cold. And I was like, what a weird winter, like how strange. But then while I was there, I heard that it like, there was like a snowpocalypse that hit Wisconsin, and I was like, oh, I'm really glad I'm not there. But then I came back. And it was like in the 30s again. And I'm like, okay, but like, I have a friend that is trying to teach me how to ice skate on one of the lakes. I think it actually is like a little like lake, like a little mini man-made lake in the park that is adjacent to the real lake, but that neither here nor there. The issue was that it was so warm that none of the lakes were frozen. <laughs> and so we couldn't go out to ice skate because the one that I need is one that has a little like helper penguin. Cause I'm like, deathly afraid of, of ice skating. I have really weak ankles and I'm like, I need the support thingy that they give kids. And that one is only at one of the rinks that's outside and it was too warm and there was no ice and they wouldn't open for weeks and weeks and weeks. So guess what? This week, <laughs> it's been like in the thirties. This week it hit negative. I think I woke up one morning and that was the morning it was negative 12. It has done that several times this week. Yesterday, I think, was the coldest it had been all week, which was wild. And of course, it was my walking day. So I like bundled myself up. I put on my like weird, like woolen, like Sherpa. I don't even know. I don't even know. And I went for a walk. Like a total nutter. I don't know what I was doing. I made it about five minutes before my thighs were like basically blocks of ice. And I was like, but I'm not at the lake yet. So I just got to walk faster because my body will heat up. It'll be completely fine. It'll be fine. And so I walked and walked and walked and I was like, I'm just getting colder. <laughs> it's windy and it's really cold. My fingers were great. They were in my mittens and my body, my torso felt fine. Um, my face even felt fine because I had my like hood thing I got in Montreal that I was wearing and like, I was very cozy, except that I chose to wear yoga chose, chose to wear. I chose to wear yoga pants on my legs. <laughs> I had my bean boots and my bean jacket and my weird hood thing and my mittens and some yoga pants. Like what? So anyway, that was the fastest 
walk to and from the lake I have done all year. <laughs> I was like power walking. I tried to stop and take some pictures and I was just like, I can, I can take like two pictures and I got, I got to turn around and like almost run back. I'm so cold. So that was yesterday. And today it's like 35 degrees. <laughs> so had I been filming yesterday, I would not have been sweating profusely in my brand new sweater that I'm so happy with. But because Wisconsin is like this, it is now warm again. And I know 35 warm, really Sarah? It's, it's warm for us. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna take a walk after this because it's sunny and it's warm. And I'm like, I don't even have to close my coat. I could just be out with my coat flapping in the wind, maybe I'll wear my new sweater. Cause I mean, it's warm in here, but it, it, I think it'll be okay outside in 35. I'm not that, I'm not that crazy, but anyway. What else have I finished? Well, a little something called the twist and turn shawl. <laughs> I finished it. Okay, sorry, I have to do this dance because as some of you may know, if you've been here before, I got obsessed with Stephen West like last September and I did the MCAL, I did a warm up, and then I did the MCAL and I've since cast on a bunch of extra things and I started feeling like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Why would I cast on so many of these intricate shawls when I don't have that much time to work on them because I have a job but I did it anyway. So it was imperative to me that I finish something in January because I had, at that, I think at that point, four Stephen Wests on the needles. That's not... So I finished it. And the way that I finished it, I'm so happy. I am so happy with it. So let me show you. Let me remind you of the colors. So we've got our lovely wing and we've got our center panel. Whoopsie. I'm being coy so that you can't see the bottom because that's the part that you hadn't seen before. And then of course our other wing. And then, dun, 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 there it is. So I decided to do the full bind off. So I was gonna do the, I think I was fairly certain last time that I was gonna do the early bind off. I did not. So the early bind off I think is like this stripe and then you do like an I cord bind off. But I thought, you know what? I think that might actually look okay if I don't block it super extreme like he did in the video. Cause that's the part that I really didn't like. And as you can see, it's a very gentle kind of undulation at the bottom. And then I thought I should put some tassels cause I had a friend that finished hers with tassels. And I was really like, I, I don't want to make a tassel. I don't really want tassels, but I do want some kind of finish. And then it, it occurred to me like in the night, what if I bind off in my hot pink? And folks, look, I mean, look at this. Look, look at this. It's just, so anyway, um, I love it. <laughs> I have worn it several times. Um, folks at Knit Night have, all, <laughs> have also worn it, which is pretty funny. Um, yeah, I doubted Steven and I should not have. I should not have doubted him because it turned out great. It's wearable. I know I said last time, like, I feel like, ugh, like, how am I even going to wear this? So let me just show you. This is kind of awkward because of the way that I'm seated. But let me show you how I've been wearing this. I've been wearing it like this. And then sometimes I will tuck the wings kind of up and then pull it down over my shoulder. So it kind of almost gives like a little bit of like a shrug kind of situation. So yeah, so that's my twists and turns. Um, the yarn I used is the Walk Cottage Merino in Marine and Greyhound. Still don't know which gray is which. Probably will never know because it was sold out and I don't know if it's coming back. And then this hot pink is La Bien uh something sock. Can't remember. Oh, my brain's very sleepy today. It's very sleepy today. Anyway, in, in the color as if. And I always think of that as like a callback to Clueless. Don't know if that's the actual reference, but that's what I always think of. So there you have it. 
Twists and Turns by Stephen West. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's clean, it's simple, it's easy to wear, it's very bold. Yeah, so super pumped. <laughs> Glad that I finally got it off the needles, but also super happy with it. And yeah, I was so worried for nothing. All right, so those are the two things that I finished in January. Um, there could have been other things finished, but <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to blame Mandy for this. Mandy for Mouses Makes. It's not really her fault. Or I could blame Ruth. Hmm. It's one of them. I don't know. But I just was like, I kind of want to cast on something. And they both were just like, I'm just casting on what I want. And I was like, yes. This is the energy that I need in 2023. I just, I want to make something new. I got all these shells on these needles and I want to make something new. And by George, I'm gonna. So, so I did. So the whips <clears throat> have multiplied a wee bit, just a, just a smidge. But before we get to the new stuff that I cast on, let's take a look at my other two Stephen West shawls. I'm saving one for the end of my whip show and tell, um, because that one includes a technique that I have learned, and I'm very excited about it. So first off, we have got Stephen West's basket weaver shawl. So it probably doesn't look a whole lot different. I have knit a lot on it, but once you get to a certain length, it just kind of just is more of the same pattern. So it's coming out a little bit more brown than it really is. It's kind of a dark, like a black with a like light brown, a lightish brown undertone but that's like literally reading like a like a cough like a chocolate it's not it's definitely closer to my sh my shirt um so this I've just been plugging away on still enjoying it I think it's gorgeous the yarn is really nice to work with um I think I have four more rows on the medium basket weave section and then I will be on to the large and so I feel pretty confident famous last words, but I feel pretty confident that this can be completed this month, even though it's a shorter month. Um, it's an easy knit and I have been using my neck light because with the weather here, <laughs> there's not really been any sun. Like everybody here has been very confused by the weather because it's not, it hasn't been very cold, but it also hasn't been sunny. And usually the winters here are like really cold and snowy and sunny. So it's like, it's the whole thing has been weird. So yeah, there hasn't been enough light even during the day for me to see my stitches. So I've had to use my neck light. And so I've just been doing that. So yeah, so that I think I will be completing rather soon. Still loving it, very excited to wear it. And I recommend that you make one for yourself. Um, I did wanna just mention really quickly, um, I don't always know where my bags have come from. Um, sometimes I just don't pay attention to the brand um, or the maker or whatever because I have a terrible memory. Um, but I did wanna mention this because several people um, asked where this bag was from when I posted it on Instagram when I was in Montreal. So this is actually by the Cocoon Tree. Um, I know about her because she is Amy Palco's aunt, I believe, um, and I saw a couple of bags on Amy's channel and I thought, ooh, I do need some bigger bags for like sweaters and like larger shawls. So I took a look at her Instagram, her Instagram, her Etsy shop, um, and was just really impressed by the variety of patterns. Um, they're just really great bags. Like just, it's such a pretty, like, I mean, it's like this sort of like linen textured bottom. It's a gorgeous fabric. Um, I just really like them. So definitely recommend those if you can get them. Um, and yeah, I've got a couple of them and I love all of them. So anyway, just wanted to mention that since people had been asking. Okay, next shawl. Now, we talked about this one last time. I, how do I put this? I appreciate, let me start with, I appreciate all of the people that were like, it's really pretty. It looks great with your skin tone. You're gonna love it when it's finished. And I was like, I know these things to be true. I believe, th I believe that these things are true. I believe them. And yet, I hate working on this project. 
So part of me is like, could I just like frog this and repurpose this yarn for a different shawl? And I'm probably gonna do that, but I haven't done it yet. So I'm gonna show it to you. I just, I don't know. It's been like over a month and I still don't love it. And part of it is that I'm not working on it because the slip stitch section is really, really tedious to me. Like there's some people who are loving it and I'm like, I really love slip extravaganza. I've enjoyed Winter Lights that had like some slip stitches in it. Um, I don't dislike slip stitches. So there's something about this motif and how like involved it is and the yarn I chose that is making me not want to work on it. So I haven't gotten very far. But let me show you what I'm talking about for people who don't know. So this, you now see on the see on the camera, it looks really pretty. I think I'm just being a weirdo. I said this last time and then people were like, yeah, kind of, it looks great. And I'm like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I said, I told myself that I would get through the next set of slip stitches and then decide. But as you can see, I haven't gotten very far. I haven't gotten very far. It's a bunch of yarns. Um, the majority of the yarns used in this are Life in the Long Grass. They're a dream to work with. I absolutely adore them. I think where I went astray, which I mentioned last time, is that this cream and yellow are like sport weight, which means that they kind of stick out a bit more than I would like. There's also brown up here that I don't like, especially with the cream. It's sort of the two color, comb like a color combination that I kind of hate the most. Um, but then it's like, I really like this section. I think I'm gonna really like the section after the next set of slip stitches, but it's just really tedious. And so part of me is thinking if I'm gonna get my seven shawls in six months done, I can't be working one round of, or one round, one row of this like every three days, which is kind of what I've been doing. I just don't really wanna work on it. So I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep on it. Now that I've shown it to you, I feel I feel better because I was like, what if I frog it? And then I go on camera and I'm like, I don't have a shawl anymore. Like that, that would feel really weird. But now that I've shown it to you, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. And then it's probably going away, to be honest, because life's too short. And I have spent a whole month like forcing myself to work on this thing. And that's not how I want my year to go. Like that's, it's already starting off on the wrong foot if that's like where my brain is at. So I don't know, nah, nah. it's a beautiful pattern. Everyone else that's made it, I've wanted their version more than the one I'm knitting, which I also think is problematic. Um, I think part of the reason why I didn't want to frog it is because it's my Montreal vacation shawl. Um, but I don't know why it has to be this pattern. I just need to use the yarn in a shawl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm being so weird about it. It's just like, just use the yarn in another pattern. I probably will just do that. I've got five skeins. Stephen West has lots of five skein or three skein even, um, or choose your own adventure skein, right? Like, so anyway, I'm almost 100% sure I'm gonna frog this and that's unfortunate, but it also is liberating because we shouldn't work on stuff we don't like, even if other people like it because knitting's about, your, it's about you, right? It's about you and what you like and what joy you're getting out of your knitting, not about what other people think looks good or what they like or what they want. So, unless of course, you're giving it to them. <laughs> Please don't make somebody something that they hate and then gift it to them. That's really, anyway, but yeah. So RIP, Aurora Cabin Shawl. <laughs> Sorry, this is another cocoon tree bag. I got it because I also sew clothing and I was like, this is adorable. And look, this has like a little, like a little tape measure, but anyway, okay. Man, I feel so much better now. Now that I've committed to frogging that thing, it's like a weight has been lifted. Like I kind of want to like do, anyway, okay. So I mentioned that I had been eager to start something new because some lovely British ladies had also been starting new things and I had been watching their channel. And frankly, they're some of the first people that I watched when I discovered podcasts last summer. And so they have a lot of sway, 
like I love their channels and I find them just charming and delightful and I was like this is exactly the frame of mind that I'm trying to be in which is like don't feel guilty or shame about starting things like do what you want and I was like yes absolutely so I came back from vacation having bought all that yarn that you all saw the last podcast and Evergreen Fiber Works, which is a local dyer here in Madison, they had the nerve to have a trunk show like a week after I got back. And I was like, wait, I'm, so I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and this is like at the yarn store that is like five minutes from here. So I was like, well, I don't have a reason to not go because it's right there. And also they're kind of my favorite local dyers, but I literally just bought up like half of Montreal. I mean, that's an exaggeration obviously, but I, I did some damage intentionally in Boston and Montreal because it was my birthday month. And I was like, I'm just gonna get what I want. Happy birthday to me. But then I came back to like regular life and here's this trunk show. And I was just like, oh dear. So I went and bad things happened. And by bad things, obviously, you know by now, I mean amazingly good things. Like fantastic, <laughs> Look, such good things. So let me start this. So this is the part where like my acquisitions are like mixed because I have to show you what I bought before I show you what I'm making so that you understand like where my brain was at, at this trunk show. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Um, I don't, they did me dirty, okay? It's like they knew I was coming. They had colors, frankly, that I've been talking about on this podcast and that I knit with and that I want to knit with. It was the worst. It was the worst. So let me just start with, <clears throat> Do you see this? Do, do you see this? It is indie dyed black sock yarn. How long have I been complaining about finding hand dyed, indie dyed black, solid black yarn? I go to the trunk show, I'm scanning the table, I see a bunch of skeins of this. I screamed so loud, I think I scared the women who work at Evergreen Fibers because they were just like, what, what is, what? And I was just like, it's black, oh my God. And then I started just grabbing skeins. <laughs> and then I had to stop myself because they're not inexpensive, okay? They're not inexpensive, not inexpensive. So I said, Hol hold on. You just did this on your on your birthday vacation. Let's let's not let's not get too hasty here. Let's not. Um, I did think though that you know what I don't have a black sweater. Fingering weight is my sweet spot for a sweater. It always has been. I used to make a bunch of like 1930s and 40s like repro sweaters, um, which I haven't done in a while, and I really miss. <laughs> as ridiculous as this is gonna sound to some people, I miss knitting a sweater on a size one needle. That's just facts. I do not like really anything over like a size four. And even four is like, I mean, I do that for the shawls and I've gone up to a five for the shawls, but I don't love it. And so all these size eights and nine and nine and a half and elevens, it's rough. My hands do not enjoy manipulating needles at that size. So. I said, but this is sock yarn. That means I can use a size one or two or even a three, but that's it. And I said, I'm getting a, a sweater's quantity. I have to. So I got four skeins of this. And I don't even know what I'm gonna make with it. <laughs> I have no clue. But what I do know, cause I did a swatch. So let me show you. Um, Actually, you know what? let me not show you the swatch yet because I have to show you the other thing that I got. But let me just jump ahead and say that I'm probably going to pair it with this Drops Alpaca. Uh, sorry, dro Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. 
I had to actually place an order at Wool Warehouse because I only had four skeins of this for something else that I haven't made yet. And I thought, okay, I might make a Cargill sweater. Not gonna lie, um, I didn't understand the beginning of the pattern. I went on the internet and people also seemed like they struggled with the beginning of the pattern. And my brain was like, this is not the time for this. You have too many things on the needles to be trying to figure out like what, what is happening here. So no. So it's still kind of on the radar because I feel like with a different brain at a different time, I could figure it out. So it's not completely gone. But regardless, I'm going to make some kind of black sweater that is this and this. And I f I'm worried that like together I might end up with a bigger needle. So we'll see. I have to do some swatching because I think this is more like a, what is this? Like a DK weight? I don't think, I'm confused. Like talk to me in the comments, folks, because I never used to hold things with things. Like I just would get a yarn and I would knit that yarn. And like, while I was gone, all of this like double stranding stuff started happening and I don't understand it. So like, I find it really hard to figure out like what weight something is gonna end up if you hold a strand of this and a strand of this. Like it makes sense if like you're holding a strand of fingering weight and a strand of lace weight. But like some of these things that look like lace aren't lace weight. Sometimes they're DK weight. I think I saw something that was like worsted, but it was like a mohair and I'm like, wait. So like, I'm just a little bit confused about that. And and as you know, I'm, I have an aversion to swatching. So I prefer not to um, have to swatch like everything, but also I'm literally saying that as I just said that my sweater is gonna grow potentially like one to 10 inches. So perhaps I should just swatch. Anyway. <clears throat> Another thing that Evergreen Fiber had at their trunk show was this. This is their Hemlock Sock Base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I just, as you can see, it's more purple. I have just been just in the purple train. I can't tell what color this is. It says like OOAK. Zero zero AK adventure skein. I I want to say if I remember correctly, I believe the dyer said that sometimes they end up with sort of like these batches that are like accidental and like unreproducible. So I think that's what these are. So when they said that to me, I got again a sweater's quantity. So I could make a sweater using my beloved size one to three needles with this yarn and then hold the brushed alpaca silk with the solid black for something else and then like I still get my like fingering weight sweater but I also get to like get a fuzzy black sweater out of it as well um but why am I showing you all the evergreen fiber stuff it's because of one particular piece of the trunk show that I came home with and it might be the greatest yarn is this true am I am I gonna is this hyperbolic I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I haven't knit. So I do have some Ching Fiber mohair or whatever. No, I think it's Surrey Alpaca. Um, I haven't knit with it yet. Since I haven't knit with it yet, the statement I am getting ready to say is 100% true, which is this yarn. Sorry if you can hear that. I have a neighbor that likes to come out onto his balcony and cough up a lung like several times a day. Anyway, this yarn from Evergreen Fiber Works, it's the greatest yarn I've ever worked with. It's their Surrey Silk Haze base. <clears throat> so it is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. And I just wanna show you this in the skein. Do you see this? This is the colorway Black Opal. This is how they did me dirty. The other yarns, I was gonna get the black. Let's be real, I was gonna get the black and I was definitely gonna get this. The purple was a nice to have. It was a nice to have. It was cause I was like already on a high from getting <laughs> the other ones, but this 
was why it was at the trunk show. I didn't even know it, but it's why. Now, when I saw this and the black, I said, oh, wait a minute. Cause they were, I was like talking to them and I was like, yeah, but what can I like use this with? Like, it's so multicolored and like, I need to like have some kind of a solid base to use it on to like showcase like how great this, this yarn is. And like, you know, I was kind of like, I could use it with the black. Part of me was thinking, but then you won't have a black, you won't have a black garment, right? The whole point of finding a black is that you don't have black garments. So if you put this over the black, it's gonna camouflage the black and like that sort of defeats the purpose. But also I made a swatch. So remember and I said earlier that I've been making lots of swatches. I've been making lots of swatches, a lot of them, a lot of swatches. So here's the swatch I made for a potential Cargill. Do you see that? So this is what it looks like to put that Surrey alpaca over their black sock base. It's very cool. But as you can see, it did not, like the pattern is kind of barely, like if I hold it back here, it's kind of hard to see. I mean, it's hard to see the bottom one too, but the bottom one's more of a texture. The top one is just like sort of, it gets lost, but you can also kind of see down here, that's what it would look like with the black and that uh, drops brushed alpaca held together, which I really like. Just kind of why I'm thinking when my brain is working, I might make a cargo out of those two. But you can see this is just, it's just gorgeous yarn. It's gorgeous. But not with the black base. Not with the black base. So off to my local yarn store I went and I inquired about some white bases because I thought maybe what I need is a white base. And the reason why I think that is because Taylor from Wool Needles Hands was talking um, in a previous episode of hers about mohair and like how to get the most out of your skeins and like what takes precedence when you like are holding two things together and like how do you mute a color, how do you get a color to pop, etc. Um, and so one of the things that I took away from that episode was if I have a neutral light colored base, then the Surrey alpaca will be a bright pop. If I have a more colored base or some kind of like variegated base, it might be kind of muddy and it probably won't give me the look that I'm going for. So I went to my local store and I explicitly was looking for a white base. Well, they didn't have the white that I wanted. Um, they had a couple of whites, but they were all just like kind of not quite right. But we ended up looking at a yarn that I've never used before called Magnolia by Universal Yarns. So it's kind of coming up here as taupe. <laughs> it isn't. I want to be very clear that it is not taupe because of my rant last time about beige. It's actually kind of a cool gray. With Well, it's kind of a warmish cool gray, which does kind of an oxymoron, but it's, it's not really that warm, but it's also not like icy cold maybe a neutral gray that that's probably the word I was looking for it's a neutral gray but this is a super weird yarn so it was recommended because the Surrey alpaca if knit with a wool would be really hot right it would be a very hot sweater and so the idea was that if I use something that wasn't wool it might help lighten up the sweater and make it more wearable and a little bit cooler. And so I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. I like that a lot. Um, so this is actually 95% modal, which I had used years ago from Knit Picks. They had uh, a yarn that I can't think of the name of now, but I used it for a skirt and really liked it. Modal is actually a very fun fabric to work with. Um, but this is 95% modal and 5% cashmere, which, what a strange mix. Have not seen that before. It feels amazing. It's kind of giving like a Pima cotton feel to it actually, which is kind of nice. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, you know what? Let me just do a swatch. I did do a swatch. I ripped it out because I knew after like this much, I was like, nope, this is, this is the winner. We are forging ahead. And I did get Gage. I don't have gauge now, <laughs> but when I made the swatch, I got gauge. So, anywho, let me show you what this combination, this combination looks like 
in a lento sweater. Oh yes, a lento. Now this, I can fully lay at the feet of Amy Palco because she was knitting a lento out of some type of speckled mohair and like this cream, I think. And it was just such a soft, fluffy looking sweater. And I thought, I want one of those. So that's why I was like, wait, I could use my cereal pack and let me go find a base. But because of that modal, the way that the Suri Alpaca is blending is really cool and unexpected. So look at this. Do you see this? Like, do you see these like pops? There's like a, like a random orange, like this yarn is wild. So I... <laughs> I don't even know what gauge I'm, I mean, I do know. I, I took another, I like measured it last night because I tried it on and it fits perfectly, but I'm not done with the increases. And so then I thought, well, hang on, I'm making the size three. I got gauge. Why is this already fitting? Now, partially it's because I have, I think I've mentioned before, I have sort of like voluptuous arms. Um, so some of the increases are gonna go towards like helping get around the circumference of my arm. Um, but it also still felt like, how many more rows of increases do I have? Because that's gonna like add quite a lot of length. So anyway, I checked again and I'm off by a stitch and a half. Like, I know the answer is make a bigger swatch and wash and dry it, but I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not going to do it. I am over swatching. This is now the third thing I think I've swatched in the past like six months that has been a fail. I swatched for another thing I made last year, which we won't talk about, but it partially, you know what, I'll talk about that when I get to my last thing that I wanna show you, which is two things from now. But anyway, so the Lento, I forget who it's by. I'm I'm very bad today, I'm very naughty today with my brain. Um, but there's a Lento Cal going on. Um, I don't remember the hashtag either. I'll put all of this in the, in the show notes because I just, it's been a week. It's been a very long week. I was sick twice and like, I haven't been sleeping, so my brain needs like, it needs a nap. It needs a nap, but I wanted to come on and do a podcast because I wanted to do it at the end of January, but too sleepy. So yeah, that's the fabric that I'm getting. I think, I mean, oh God, I can't wait to wear this. It's so soft. I mean, the modal's already soft. And then you've got the cashmere. <sighs> It's just so great. It's so great. I love it. I love it. I can't work on it as much as I want because I have all these shawls, but this was really just one of those, like, I want to make one of those and I'm not waiting until I finish all these shawls. I'm just not waiting. I refuse. So I didn't wait. And now I have a lot of things on the needles. <laughs> um, like this next thing. So I've never done a test knit before. Um, I applied for one other test knit earlier, I think maybe earlier in the fall. Um, and I didn't get picked. I think it was for Jessie made, which like totally, I mean like a billion people try to be her test knitter. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so I didn't get picked for that, which was fine. I had so many things I was working on that I was kind of relieved, but somehow still decided to put my name forward for a test knit when it popped up in January while I was knitting four Stephen West shawls and also had started this Lento and also had plans to cast on this other thing. So of course that's the one that I got picked for. <laughs> that's the one that I got picked for. Um, it's a very cute sweater. It's kind of like a tee. Like it's a, it's a short sleeve, like woven hemmed, beaded tee and I thought this is super cute I definitely want to have this and it looks like it would be a relatively fast knit so I'm fine if I get picked and then I got picked and looked around at all the things that I was working on and I thought oh dear this was not this is not a smart thing to do um nevertheless 
we persevere as they say. Um, the first thing that was challenging was finding buttons. So the um, pattern designer, so the, the pattern is called the, um, oh no. Oh dear, look at me. What a terrible test knitter I am. And I don't have my iPad, so I can't look it up. It'll be in the show notes. This is a bad episode. <laughs> anyway, um, the thing that was really interesting about this particular project was the beads. So it's basically like a raglan and I really enjoy it. Like it's it's been a very easy, very fun knit so far. So let me just show you where we're at. I think it's colors vibrant, it's Rios. So you all know how I feel about Rios. Um, the thing that was tricky though, is that because it's a worsted weight yarn and because of the way we were recommended to attach the buttons at first, um, I had to find button buttons, beads. I had to find beads that could accommodate two strands of worsted through them and a crochet hook. So I ended up having to get these like really large beads instead of like, the seed beads that I'm used to using for knitting. Um, since then, like people have been like, oh, hey, there's like other ways that you can attach the beads. And so like now those are options, but I had already purchased the beads and like added them before that happened. Um, the cool thing about the beads though, is that I went to our local bead store down on State Street and they glow in the dark. <laughs> so I don't know when I'm gonna have occasion to actually wear this sweater in the dark and have it be noticeable. But I was like, that's kind of like a fun little thing. If I ever end up in like an escape room or, <laughs> or like in a dungeon in the sweater, like I'll have like a cool like little beaded yoke that's like glowing in the dark. And like, how fun is that? Um, the one thing I will say um, about it, not the pattern or the designer, but just the process of being a test knitter is that I don't think it's for me. Um, there are several people making the same sizes. So I'm making a large, I think there are two other people making larges as well. Um, so that is sort of demotivating because people have already finished. And so it's kind of like, okay, well they've already made it through the pattern and like picked up all of the like math mistakes and like, you know, grammar errors and like whatever else. So there's like not a whole lot for me to do. Um, the other thing is that I have, as we've mentioned, like some body stuff that means that I have to tweak patterns to get them to fit me properly. Um, and because the point of a test knit is to knit it basically as written and then provide feedback and yardage and you know all of those kinds of things like I'm going to end up with a garment that I can't really wear so it's not the fault of the designer it's not the fault of the pattern but it's kind of a waste of my time because I'm just going to have to rip it back once I like finish it do all the measurements and turn those in like I'm then going to have to go back and like undo up to the yoke decrease and whatever that I need to do for like the way my body is shaped and then like re-knit it. So that kind of stinks <laughs> because I don't have a ton of time and um, had I had I realized that it was going to fit the way that it's fitting, I would have been like, oh, this isn't a great thing for me to test knit. I should probably only test knit like shawls and socks um, because sweaters ever since I discovered in the summer last year that like I have a narrow back, I have to alter all of them because otherwise I get this very weird gapy back and then it just doesn't look, it's not very flattering. So so that's the, the one thing that is kind of sad for me. Um, and that kind of leads me to my rant. <laughs> so I don't wanna be like a super ranty person on this channel because like knitting is joyous and I do it because it's fun. Um, but I am like, I have been kind of a little bit sad about like some of the body positivity or lack thereof in the knitting community. Again, I've been gone for a while and before I left, I think I was a medium in most designs, like by old standards, not by new standards because thankfully people have been a lot more inclusive and so medium doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. Um, so it never really occurred to me until I came back 
with just a larger chest. And I'm a very privileged person. Like I carry my weight in my lower body, which means that for knitting, I don't have a ton of problems finding sizes to fit me. Um, but like every now and again, like there's something that I wanna knit and it doesn't come in my size. And I think to myself like, huh, that's not great. Like all these people are making this thing and I wanna make it, but like, it doesn't come in my size and like that kind of stinks. So I get that like grading patterns is time consuming, requires like, I think from what I've heard, requires like somebody with like expertise in grading, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? But also like it's very isolating to watch people making a pattern that you want to make and know that you would either have to like deconstruct it and like remake it for your own body size or just not participate at all. Um, so one of the fails that I had last summer was because of this very thing. It's a pattern that comes in one size and somebody at my knit night had made it and she's a smaller person and it fit great. And I thought, oh, that's super cute. I wanna make one too. And then I looked at the pattern and I was like, well, hang on. I think I need to like add some panels or something because there's like not like how is it going to get across my chest and so I like Frankenstein some design and it ended up looking a hot mess and I was really upset because I was super excited about it and I envisioned it fitting my body the way that it fit my friend's body which it could have if the designer had actually like made it for larger sizes but it literally just had one size and then that size was for a small and then it had a medium, which literally just added width to the back panel, but it had two front panels. And I was just like, that isn't how you like upsize a pattern. Like I'm not even a pattern writer and I know that, like that can't be right. So I tried to like add one repeat to the front panels because again, my width is in the front of my body, <laughs> not the back. So I made the small for the back and then tried to make a medium, whatever that means, for the front. And it was just, it was a disaster. Like I ended up not doing my decreases right because I hadn't accounted for like the row height being different. And like, it doesn't really matter, but like, it was just really, it was really depressing because it was such a cute shirt. And I had used this amazing yarn that was like this fabulous fuchsia color. And I had gotten these buttons at the button fair and like all of it kind of came together perfectly until I put it on. And then I was just like, this is awful. And so part of me was like, all right, I'm gonna have to rip this back and like just make the small because I think at the end of the day, it probably would have fit me because of the, the gauge that I was getting. But like, it won't fit anybody bigger than me. And that sort of keeps happening where there's like super popular patterns and they go up to like a 42 inch chest or a 44 inch chest. And I'm like, that's not a large size. I understand that it's a large size in certain countries. Like I totally get that. But like for an international designer, like you have to take all people into consideration as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I just have friends that have bigger bodies. And so I think what I'm, going to try to commit to is supporting designers who are size inclusive um, and not make these one size fits all patterns, not make patterns where like the bust goes up to like a 40 and then I can just sort of like fudge it to get to a 42 by changing a needle size because it's just not, it's not great. And it's also like when someone then asks you like, oh, hey, like what pattern is that? And you have to tell them and then you see their face of like, oh, that doesn't come in my size. like just doesn't, it doesn't feel good. So I kind of came to all of that with this test knit, right? Like the, the pattern, she's, she's size inclusive. It's definitely not an issue with this designer or this pattern, but I was thinking about like having to modify things and like how people in, with bigger bodies have to like Frankenstein their own versions of popular patterns if they want to participate in the trends. And that just seems like really unfortunate to me. So Anyway, so I don't know when I'll get done with the test knit. It's due by the end of this month, I think the 25th. Um, there's not much left. I think I've got like two or three more rounds of the yoke. 
and then like five inches of the body and then the hem and then the cuffs, I think, something like that. So there's not a ton left. It's super easy to knit. Um, I'm enjoying the Rios, of course. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you what color it is. Hold on. Let me, can't remember the name of the pattern, can't remember the name of the designer, but um, yeah, so this is called Living Coral, which I think is super accurate. It's just like a gorgeous color. Rios is just, I'm so glad it's a worsted weight. It's just, it's it's fantastic. So anyway, um, rant over, but you know, sad things. <laughs> okay, so my last whip, save the best for last. I, <laughs> I really just wanna knit this every day. Really, that is what I want to do. Everything I've shown you so far, I mean, the Lento feels great. The, the way that it's modeling is, is magical. But really, the thing that I wake up dreaming about, the thing I grab when I'm like going to knit night, the thing that I'm like, could I sneak in like a half of a row during this work meeting, is the Starflake. <laughs> It's the Starflake. So last time I mentioned how I was going to learn how to brioche come hell or high water. And a bunch of people in the comments who were so sweet and they were like, you're going to be fine. Brioche isn't that hard. It's just a little bit awkward at first, but you'll get the hang of it. And I was like, I don't know, folks. I don't know. Um, you were correct. You were correct. I got the hang of it. Um, I dropped a bunch of stitches. I dropped a bunch of the little shawls that Stephen West calls them. Um, and I was basically able to fix almost everything. I've got one fail that I'm just ignoring. I'm like, you know what? Out of all the brioche that I have currently done, I just have this one weird section. Like, I'm good. It's fine. Um, so let me show you what I have. Do you see that? Look at these little brioche stitches. Look at that. Yay. Oh, so excited. And still loving the yarn, still loving the sort of grungy, like speckle that's happening in this like light. What, what did we decide this was? Lilac? I don't know, whatever, this light purple. Just so cool. Just, I love it. So yeah, this is the Starflake by Stephen West. I have used Pax Fiber. Um, let me see what these colors are because I have, as you all know, a terrible memory. Just a dash. Okay, so the light purple is the Pax Fibers, just a dash. And then this purple is actually West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply in, what is this color called? Do, 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 do. Penny Royal. Penny Royal. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I think I am halfway through the brioche. The only thing that is making me a little bit nervous about meeting my deadline of the seven shawls in six months, um, I also mathed wrong last time. And so I have until the end of... March, not the end of this month, which can't math. Um, but the only thing that I'm worried about is that the brioche takes a long time. So some people mentioned like, well, you know, you've got to kind of knit it twice. And I was like, huh? And now that I've learned how to brioche, I'm like, oh yeah, like you have to kind of do each row twice. They're long because it's Stephen West. And so I'm a little bit worried that like it's taking me longer than I would like it to. Um, to get through the brioche section. So I'm trying to speed that up. It's also kind of why I'm reaching for it more than the other things because I'm excited to see what happens at the end of the brioche section. I like the weird little like flaps that he's got you making and then like that final border, but that's gonna be a beast also. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to, trying to work on it more. Um, all the other shawls are pretty straightforward. We already talked about ripping out the Aurora Cabin shawl, so I might pick up either the Curvette or the Pierre because those were on my list anyway in the fall. Um, and I had yarn for the Curvette, but it turned into the Winter Light shawl. So that one's kind of overdue anyway, so I might make that one. Um, but yeah, so those are my whips. I'm very excited about everything except for Aurora. I think I'm on schedule to get everything finished by the end of next month. The test knit will be done this month. I'm also hoping to get the Lento done this month because once I get done with the 
increases for the yoke, I think it's just straight, straight knitting until I get to the hem. And so that's gonna be very easy to take with me and work on. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's my knitting whips, but let's talk about crochet. So for those of you who don't crochet, you can go grab yourself a beverage. And then when you come back, I'll be on to the um, last two things that I purchased. <laughs> But for those of you who are curious and who enjoy being a, a hooker, um, I decided to take back up crochet in the fall. Um, I had started in the summertime just trying to remember how to crochet because as with knitting, I had taken a bit of time off, could not remember, and made like a cute little washcloth, but I made it using the mosaic crochet technique. I had just made the lune shawl, which is mosaic knitting. And I thought, oh, well, I know how to mosaic crochet because I'm sure it's just like mosaic knitting. I don't know why I would think that. I, I don't know, I don't know. It's not at all. Um, so the, the washcloth that I made was underlay mosaic crochet. At the time, I didn't know there was a difference. So I made this washcloth and I was like, oh, that was super easy. Like. Pff, Bam, got it. Um, so I decided after finding a picture of this gorgeous rug, it was really a blanket, but then she had a rug version um, on Instagram. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make that. I have a bathroom that could use a handmade rug and I have a lot of time on my hands. So I'm gonna make that. But before I started, I messaged the designer and I said, hey, how advanced is this? Because I'm not very like skilled at crochet. And she wrote me back and she said, well, have you done any mosaic crochet before? And I said, oh yeah, I made this washcloth. And she said, oh, well, have you done any overlay mosaic crochet? And I said, I don't know what that is. And she said, oh dear, I would start with something small. <laughs> and I said, okay, fair point, fair point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I joined her Facebook group, her being Moira Douglas. Um, I joined her Facebook group. I asked a lot of questions and then I went out and I bought a bunch of wool. Um, and basically the pattern that I decided to start with was not the rug because that one, I couldn't figure out the math to, to like, it basically was panels. And then you like added panels and a border to get the length and width that you wanted, but none of the configurations that I came up with like fit the space in my bathroom. So I was like, this is too much math. In the meantime, let me just like learn the technique on this other thing. Um, and so she, I went to her shop and she had something called a Jamie cushion. And I thought, oh, how cute. I'll just make myself some couch cushions. That'll teach me the technique and I don't have to then worry about it. And I can make the rug after I figure out the math. So that's what I decided to do. Um, she recommended me making something small. The Jamie cushion, the, the couch cushion, I believe was 10 inches. I'm me. You probably have picked up by now that I'm a little bit extra. So I thought, well, why make the 10 inch one when I can get more practice by making the floor pillow, which is 27 inches. So here we are. So this is it. This is it. It is a giant. <laughs> It is gargantuan. I think um, one of the the fellas from uh, Needles at the Ready used Jihugic one day and I was like stealing, must have, like, but it's so pretty. It's like, and it's, it's, let me just like give you an up close. Do you see that? Just like, when I tell you it was a struggle though, it was a struggle. The pattern, so first of all, I've never used a pattern to crochet. I've made a bunch of granny squares. I've never followed a pattern. I didn't even, this is gonna sound very ignorant, but this is a safe space. I didn't know there were patterns for crochet, um, especially for like a square. Like I was like, I'm just making a square. Why is there a pattern? But the pattern wasn't any pattern. It was like a pattern in the round. So she was talking to me about this and I was like, I don't understand how to read this. And she was like, have you not seen these before? And I said, no. And she goes, oh dear. She goes, okay, well, I have a couple of videos. And I said, okay, great. So I watched the videos and then I tried to like try and get it. I was like, eventually it clicked. <laughs> but like, so now I consider myself a mosaic crochet master. I haven't done, there's some other techniques 
in in the blanket that started this whole thing that I still haven't gotten to. Um, but it was it was a learning curve, like for sure. And in the end, I loved it and I'm not put off by it at all. And I definitely want to make more things using this overlay crochet technique. But I was not interested in making a second one of those for the back of the pillow. So I went to Joanne's and I talked to one of the people there and I was like, oh, you know, I need to find some fabric. I need to make this like fabric back for this pillow. But like, I think it needs to be thicker than the colors that you have over here. And like also the thick ones that are over here are like not great. Like, I was like, what do I do? And this child, literally a child, like 15, I think, working at Joanne's, which I think is legal. Hmm. Anyway, but they were like, well, what if you just made a simple single crochet back and then just joined the two pieces and put your insert in? Then that way you don't have to worry about trying to find matching fabric because we had looked and there was nothing in all of Joann's that matched this color scheme, which I could not believe. There wasn't even just like a plain like solid teal or, or something. There was nothing. So then once they said this, I was like, I could do that. I could, I could do that. So I sat down a couple weeks ago and I plotted out how much yarn I had left, which was not a ton. And I came up with a color scheme that I thought would look good as the reverse to that design. And this is what I came up with. So super simple, just three rows of single crochet and then I changed colors. I didn't know how to carry yarn up the sides so there's some some shenanigans. I did eventually start weaving in ends as I went um, because I saw a video on that but I didn't really know how to do that either. Um, so that's new but yeah so I'm just basically working this pattern until I get to 27 inches. I do need to block it. It's a little bit compressed so it looks smaller than it, it will end up being. Um, but yeah, I am very excited about this pillow and I love working on this project. It's one of the things that is just very easy to take with me. It's highly portable and um, very easy to work on. So I'm loving it and I'm looking forward to doing more crochet. One of the things that I would like to do this year is crochet a garment because I've never done that. So I'm thinking maybe I'll crochet a sweater. Um, if y'all have suggestions for crocheted sweaters that you like, let me know. Um, but yeah, so those are all of my whips now, including my crocheted whips. I hope that those of you who ran off when I said crochet are back. Um, I do want to just show two more acquisitions that I'm very excited about. Um, one of them, as I mentioned, is the Coco Knits pop-up dryer otherwise known as the Pringle. Um, so I got this to dry sweaters because I'm planning to finish a couple of sweaters. The idea is that this pops open and it kind of creates, literally looks like a Pringle and it sits on a surface and it allows air to go under and over. So it's supposed to speed up your drying times so that you don't have to like put fans and stuff on your knitting and like wait 80,000 years for it to dry. So I'm very excited about that because I don't have a ton of space. I mean, I do have a lot of space, but I don't have a ton of craft space to have things drying. So I'm looking forward to like fast drying knits. Um, the other thing that I got, and this is like kind of a silly thing to show, and I never see people show these kinds of things, which is why I'm going to do it. Um, I got some new, I got some new stitch markers from Coco Knits. So while I was getting the Pringle, I thought, you know what? I've never actually tried a triangular stitch marker. And I think Stephen West was the one that said that he uses them and like they're kind of nice because they don't blend into the fabric. Um, and sometimes when I'm knitting, if I'm using the circular ones and they're just the right size for the needle, they do kind of slip underneath some of the stitches or otherwise like kind of get discombobulated. So I'm gonna try the triangles and see if it makes a difference, especially with like yarn overs and stuff like that, because for the Starflake, I have definitely had to like scooch stitch markers like under or around like yarn overs because they've like ended up in the wrong place. So yeah, okay. So that is it for acquisitions and whips and my finished objects. And now I wanna take a minute to thank a few folks. Um, 
I should have done it at the beginning, but I, again, brain. Um, so I have been shouted out by a bunch of people since I've started and I'm so very grateful. So I wanted to just like mention a couple of those folks. Um, so I wanted to thank Taylor at Wool Needles Hands. Um, I wanted to thank the guys at Needles at the Ready. Um, I got shouted out, I believe, well, I watched the episode yesterday, <laughs> um, the grocery girls, which is like wild. Um, I also, who else? Oh, duh. <laughs> Ruth loves to knit. Um, Ruth's my favorite. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the first podcasts that I ever found, she's delightful and, um, yeah, so can't say more about that. Um, I also wanted to mention um, a podcast that I have been watching. <laughs> Mostly I've been on, she's, so she's been on a little bit of a, of a break because I think work has picked up quite a bit. So there's been more Instagram than there has been YouTube, I think, unless the algorithm is messing with me and just hasn't showed me her video. Um, but Marissa Maid is hysterical. <laughs> and so helpful um she just put out a tutorial i think yesterday on how to fix like fallen brioche stitches and i was just like this is gold like just fantastic a wonderful addition she works at magpie fibers and makes some stunning objects and just is a fabulous personality so if you have not taken a look at her instagram or her youtube highly recommend it um just fantastic um okay so it's giveaway time. It is giveaway time. I apologize in advance because you're gonna hear a lot of crunching because I kept everything in a bag so as not to lose things because a couple of you asked for a tour of this space and um, maybe in the future, but uh, if you could see what was happening in here, you might send help. So, so <laughs> we're not doing that anytime soon. Um, but let me show you what is in this goodie bag. And again, sorry for the, the crinkling. Ah, so much crinkling. Okay, crinkling done. So first off, while I was in Montreal, I picked up a skein of the Julie Asselin. So I showed some other skeins of this last time. This is the Fino, which is 75% Merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. So there will be this skein in the color pixelated. I thought it would be like fun. Also, it's sort of gray and grungy, which is like my whole vibe. So I hope it's yours too. But then I also thought I would like to give people something that maybe they can work, that they can make a project out of, you know? So I went to my local yarn store, Fiddlesticks, um, yesterday actually. Today's Saturday? Yeah, yesterday to look for something to coordinate with the Fino. And we stumbled upon a local hand-dyed yarn from Lady Pearl in the sparkle sock base. Let's see, this is 75% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina. I know that Stellina is like not super common anymore, but look at this. I don't know if it's probably not picking up the sparkle as much as it could. It's not like super, super sparkly, but it's, it's lovely. So this is the colorway lapis. So, uh, there's kind of, like, you can kind of see, there's, like, little pops of this color in here, which is what I thought was kind of fun. So, anyway, you will be getting these two skeins. The folks at Espas Trico were pretty great, and they threw in <laughs> a little packet of soak, so you'll be able to wash your project. Um, and then... I also got a bag from Espas Trico, one of their wool top bags, and it's got the little Espas Trico logo on it that you can keep your project in. So that's two skeins of yarn, an Espas Trico bag, and a little sample of soak. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, great, what do I need to do? Well, since this is my first giveaway, uh, Why don't we, I'm thinking on the fly because I hadn't really thought about like what you needed to do. And then I realized like usually there's like some kind of like call to action that is like required. Um, since it's Black History Month in America, why don't you leave below your favorite black maker 
Doesn't have to be knitting, can be any kind of craft. Um, but leave that below and I guess subscribe to my channel. Sure, subscribe to my channel. Um, and uh, you don't have to follow me on Instagram. You can if you'd like to, but I think that's enough. So subscribe to my channel. Tell me who your favorite black maker is and I will select someone at the end of this month. That gives people plenty of time to get to the video. I know that these are very long, so people watch them in kind of spurts. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I think that will be enough time for folks to watch the video, think about who it is that they want to put in the comments, um, and then I will mail it out. It's open to everybody. Um, I have no idea, like, how far away some of you even are. I know there's some folks watching from Australia. That feels like that might be the furthest place, but I don't know. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Um, let me know in the comments if there is anything else that you want to know, and I'll talk to you next time. And next time, there won't be an Aurora cabin shawl. There'll be something else for sure. All right, I'll talk to you later. Happy knitting.